Blackman from the 6th District of Minnesota. We're here today to talk about the Pigford Settlement. This was referenced as recently by the President of the United States in his press conference on September 10th on Friday and then also last week. There was a press conference that was done by several of our colleagues over in the United States Senate calling for a quick settlement of the Pigford issue. We also agree that we want to make sure that there is a quick and timely settlement made and that those who have truly and wrongly been discriminated against by the USDA do receive their just and fair settlement. We believe that there are actual instances of discrimination, of, of discrimination that occurred by the USDA and they must be compensated. Where our concern lies is in the area of what appears to be massive and widespread fraud and abuse of the Pigford process. This is what we're concerned about. Uh, to, to that end, uh, we know of people who are from the USDA, from the FBI, who are whistleblowers, who have comments that they would like to be able to say to the United States Congress. Um, and I think it's important, and we call specifically on the Attorney General Eric Holder to hold a full and complete investigation on the Pigford 1 and Pigford 2 settlement of the claims. It appears again that there is potentially massive fraud by trial lawyers who are involved in this and also by some claimants who may not deserve this money and may not qualify under this money. There are again witnesses who are willing to come forward uh, and testify, whistleblowers if you will. We have examples of some of those. Uh, we also have a statement from the former Ag Secretary, Ed Schaefer, and um, he has asked if we would read this in his absence today. He had hoped that he could be here with us, and I'll read that statement now. After my nomination and subsequent unanimous confirmation as Secretary of the USDA, I set about to learn as much about the department as fast as I could. One initial briefing was by the Undersecretary for Civil Rights. Included was a brief on several class lawsuits against the department alleging discrimination against minority farmers. Also, it was noted that there were allegations of the department dragging its feet and getting claims accredited and paid for the court-ordered settlement of Pigford litigation. I soon had several visits from organizations representing black farmers urging me to settle all claims quickly. I was concerned about the department's handling of discrimination claims and asked that the paperwork be expedited. It was then that I was made aware that there were possibly many claims that were fraudulent and much due diligence was warranted. Understanding that validation and verification of the claims slowed down the process, it was felt that since taxpayer money was at stake that investigations into the proprietary of claims were prudent and warranted. I was surprised that over $1 billion had already been distributed to aggrieved farmers and there were still so many Oakland applications. As you may recall, the litigants in the original Pigford 1 filing on both sides of the claim agreed that there's a potential pool of one to 4,000 litigants. As of the first Pigford filing, there were 22,000 filings. 64% of those claims were awarded. Now, as you may know, there are 94,000 claims that are filed in the Pigford settlement, but according to the Bureau of Census, there were originally a total of black farmers in the United States of 30, 33,000 black farmers, which again asked the question of fraud. But I felt that it was necessary to spend the time and money to, to validate these claims. While some claimed that a settlement on all claims would be in the best interest of the department, I thought it would simply be irresponsible to overlook allegations of fraud and abuse because of our responsibility to spend taxpayer dollars wisely and efficiently. A $100 million appropriation was included in the 2007 Farm Bill, which was signed and passed in June of 2008, to be used to settle claims. This money was needed to validate and verify the claims as there was a huge backlog of pending cases and neither the USDA nor the Department of Justice had the budget flexibility to look at each application and the circumstances to ascertain the validity of the claim. The process would be time consuming and expensive, but we, but we owed it to the taxpayers. I am concerned that the legislative validation process has now been overlooked, and our government has agreed to settle all claims without proper investigation of the potential fraud and abuse. This is unfair to those who are truly discriminated against and have legitimate claims against the USDA. These farmers deserve to know that their cases were heard and the judgment was in their favor. But by allowing some claimants to get paid that were never engaged in farming, 
or were not in fact discriminated against diminishes the legitimacy of those who were. Inappropriate payments will also sour taxpayer attitudes against our government. I've heard that Congress is considering spending 8 to $10 billion of taxpayer money to pay any claim of discrimination against the government, whether legitimate or not. This rush to judgment is totally unfair to all taxpayers, including the minorities who are truly discriminated against. I urge that our government step back and institute a procedure to properly investigate each claim to see if it is appropriate or not. The allegations of fraud and abuse must be addressed if we are going to assure our citizens that their government is pursuing equal justice for all. And now, Steve King of Iowa. Well, thank you, Michelle. My, uh, my history in the Pigford issue goes back more than half a decade when uh, one of the county directors of the Farm Service Administration who had been uh, called here to Washington, D.C. to help administer the $1.05 billion that were paid out in Pigford 1 uh, came back with a box of files that he had copied and a sick feeling in his stomach to see that uh, that hit from his view the magnitude of the fraud that was included. And, and I'm with Michelle Bachman and Bob Goodlatt and others. I believe that there were people discriminated against. And the purpose of Pigford was to resolve that issue and put that behind us and clean up the USDA in that regard and move forward. And I'm convinced that this administration is seeking to clean up the USDA and move forward. But I think that they've turned a blind eye to the fraud and the corruption that is there. That, that Farm Service Administra Administration County Director told me that he believed that a minimum of 75% of the claims that he processed were fraudulent. And that happens to be one of the lower numbers of fraud that I get when I sit down and talk to USDA employees. And we'll speak off the record, and I can think of at least four different meetings in my office where they're willing to come in and sit down and speak off the record and uh, tell me their experiences, but they're afraid for their jobs. They're afraid of retribution, and we, I know we have a whistleblower's law. But as I look at this, and I see this $1.05 billion in Pigford 1 that was to resolve all of these cases, and I've read through the consent decree, and I've read through Judge Paul Friedman's opinion, and a few things in there that don't emerge. One of them is that the $50,000 that was the lump sum payment that went for those in Track A of Pigford 1 wasn't $50,000. It was accompanied by a 25% check that was written to the IRS and debt forgiveness. And Judge Friedman, in his opinion, did the math and added it up and put the number in that opinion that the average settlement for a black farmer would be $187,500. That's an average debt of $100,000 plus the 25% for that tax liability and a $50,000 check plus the 25% tax for that liability. There's not a mention in there on what is paid out in contingency fees, and I'm having a hard time documenting what those contingency fees are. But Pickford One was to resolve this issue, and they advertised it across the South. There were 42 public meetings in the state of Alabama alone, numerous newspaper art, um, ads that were run, and numerous, numerous radio ads, and I believe also television. It was prescribed in the, in the consent decree how much it had, effort had to be made to inform. And so we had perhaps put an end to Pigford until such time as we saw a bill that was introduced in the House by Bobby Scott and others and had a hearing before the Judiciary Committee. And at that time, those on that panel, I was one that, that uh, my antenna went up because of my background with Pigford. And nearly the same time, we saw Barack Obama at that time, a United States Senator, introduce legislation to open up a second round of Pigford. Neither one of those two pieces of legislation became law. That would mean that Congress didn't direct Pigford II to be opened up. And uh, I have had a meeting with the Secretary of Agriculture yesterday in my office who informed me that I voted to open up Pigford II, and now he's just carrying out the directions of Congress and that it describes uh, that they have been directed by Congress in the Farm Bill, which I refer to as the 2008 Farm Bill, to uh, set up a new system of Pigford II and resolve these issues. So I went back and looked at the language to see what it was that I was charged with being responsible for. And I see language in here. They put $100 million into the Farm Bill for Pigford II. Well, a closing of Pigford I, actually. There's nothing on anybody's law for Pigford II. And that land say, and it says, shall not exceed $100 million. I had my debate with Chairman Colin Peterson who emphatically stated that I had my numbers wrong. I stated that this would be a $1.3 billion additional claim 
and that this was just a placeholder to open the door to pour another $1.3 billion into the pockets of people, many of whom never farmed, wanted to farm, or had a legitimacy for even making the claim, let alone be discriminated against. Well, I apparently lost that argument with Chairman Peterson. This language, though, reflects what he said to me, that $100 million would solve this, would clean up Pigford, and we wouldn't see it again, we'd put it behind us. That's not what the Secretary of Agriculture tells me. So we have the, secret, the, the, the chairman of the Agriculture Committee at odds with the Secretary of Agriculture on this issue. Either it's $100 million that caps this off, as the statute says, or it's $1.3 billion that opens this thing up to any claimant whatsoever. That's where we stand. And um, I'm, I'm pretty intense on this, that when you have a statute of limitations and you close this off, and all of the people that are involved in the class uh, have been addressed as to the validity of their claim. When I'm hearing that 75% or more of the claims are fraudulent, and I see that they have taken license to open up a second Pigford II without a statutory foundation and go to this Congress and ask us for roughly one and a quarter billion dollars additionally when Congress hasn't had a voice on this, a debate on this, or a hearing that spoke to this issue, then it is not time for them to slip that into a CR, and it's not time to see something like that come up and any kind of a, of a lame duck session. But it is time for us to put the marker down and say, when gavels change hands in January, we have an obligation to the American citizen and taxpayer to do that kind of an examination and do a congressional investigation to actually look into the fraud, determine what's there, and see if we can actually tell the American people what's going on. I don't think we can put the toothpaste back in the tube, but we have an obligation. Uh, to put the brakes on it now until we can see how deep the fraud goes. Thank you, and I'd be very happy to yield to my friend and colleague, Bob Goodlatte of Virginia. Well, thank you, Steve. I'm Bob Goodlatte uh, from the 6th District of Virginia and former chairman of the House Agriculture Committee and ranking member of the House Agriculture Committee uh, up until two years ago. This uh, is a very serious matter that ha goes back a long way, a lot more than, than half a, a decade, as Steve mentioned. Uh, and I want to thank uh, both Steve King and Michelle Bachman for speaking out about this, uh, and uh, most especially to Secretary Ed Schaefer uh, for the uh, statement that Michelle read uh, regarding his concerns about this, because his experience uh, is, is very recent in terms of uh, looking back at Pigford after it had been going on for a long time. This actually dates back to the Clinton administration when uh, Secretary Glickman acknowledged that there had been discrimination in some uh, counties around the country uh, against black farmers who had applied, uh, legitimately applied, for uh, funding under various agricultural programs. And uh, measures were taken back then to address the problem. Uh, Steve outlined that process and where it went awry, but it indeed did go awry in terms of the number of claims received and the validity of those claims. When I was chairman of the committee, we held a hearing in the Agriculture Committee at which substantial evidence was brought forward uh, regarding the questionable nature of many of these claims. So when we came forward uh, into uh, a Democratic majority in the Congress <coughs> and uh, Chairman Peterson decided to uh, address this in the last Farm Bill, many of us expressed very strong reservations about proceeding forward. And uh, nonetheless, uh, they did proceed, but they put an amount in there uh, that was supposed to cover any additional claims. A uh, hundred million dollars, Steve is correct. Uh, there were many people who claimed it would be substantially more than that. But our concern is that justice is done. Those people who have been discriminated against by the Department of Agriculture are entitled to have their day in court to bring evidence forward and to have their claims adjusted. That was done a long time ago. Some claim that they were not given uh, proper notice, uh, so this additional opportunity to come forward with additional claims was made, but the fact of the matter is that if that is done, it should be done under a set of circumstances where everyone who has an interest in this, those who've been discriminated against, and those who are going to have to foot the bill, the American taxpayers, all need to be properly represented under a fair system in which uh, a judicial process is established where people have to prove the case uh, that they were indeed discriminated against because otherwise we do an injustice to those, as Secretary Schaefer said, who were actually discriminated against by giving uh, payments to people 
uh, who've never engaged in farming. Uh, there's been testimony that some of them have never intended to engage in farming. And uh, the fact of the matter is, we need to make sure, because of the fact that there are going to be claims made against government agencies for a whole host of different things going forward in the future, that when those claims occur, that justice is done, that the American way of people having their day in court and being fairly heard on their evidence and being required uh, to prove their case in court uh, be continued and established. And the process that's being established right now by Secretary Vilsack does not do that. He should put the brakes on this. He should not be asking the Congress to sweep money into this uh, under the rug here in the closing days of this Congress. And instead, we should have new hearings on this issue so that uh, all of the details of what has transpired since the last congressional hearings of many years ago were conducted so that everyone can see in a very transparent way what is being done to assure that those who are discriminated against are being fairly treated and those who do not have legitimate claims are being properly exposed by a fair process. That, I think, is the appropriate thing to do, and I would encourage the administration and the leadership in this Congress uh, to put the brakes on an effort to jam this through in the closing days of the Congress and instead step back and do it the right way. And again, we want to be clear, the purpose of our press conference is to call on Speaker Pelosi, uh, Leader Harry Reid, and President Obama to do a thorough investigation and not pass any appropriation for Pigford until that is done. We're also calling on Attorney General Holder to do his due diligence as well on examining the fraud implications that are involved in the Pigford settlement. And again, we go back to the original numbers of the litigants which, on both sides, which claim they estimated on the outside from 1,000 to 4,000 litigants. And despite the Department of the Census indicating that there were 33,000, a pool of potentially 33,000 total black farmers in the United States, one would have to assume that not only was every farmer applying for a loan, every farmer was discriminated against, but also every farmer then would be eligible for pigments, Pigford settlement money. But not only that, we're now up to 94,000 litigants. That's an issue that needs to be dealt with. Also, if this level of discrimination was going on in the USDA, none of us are saying that discrimination was not going on in, in the department. But then we have to have an answer to the question. Why is it that there is no evidence of not even one USDA employee being fired over this level of discrimination. Certainly employees should have been fired. If they wouldn't have been fired, there certainly, certainly should have been evidence of reprimands or some sort of um, action being taken by the USDA. We have no, we have no indication of that, although we, again, we would like to see if that has been done. Uh, we want to make sure that this is not funded. And then also, um, Steve King had indicated that there are witnesses that, that um, have come forward as Whistleblower.